Right, we're here today at Erinbrook Fisheries again, and what I want to concentrate on today, I want to talk about maggot fishing, mainly on that short, in fact, exclusively on that short line. It's definitely been the, a massively popular tactic at all the F1 venues that I fish, is to feed maggots at five, six, seven metres, where somewhere nice you can throw them by hand all through the day and then catch a few fish in it later on. It's become the thing to do. What I do believe though is that fish have got very much used to getting caught on that line and getting used to that constant shower of maggots. So I like to do things in a little different, different sort of way, the way I feed it. And that what I'm going to explain today is how I feed it and when I feed it, more importantly. I also want to talk about the three different rigs that I may use uh, during a session. I generally only use two in a session, but I want to explain three different types of rigs that I'd use for fishing, depending on how the fish are feeding in my peg. So what I'm going to go through first, I'm going to talk about a really negative rig. This is a rig that I've been using all through the winter when you're fishing for... You're fishing for half a dozen fish, you're after a few bites at the end. I've been using this both on my far slopes and I've been using it down the middle on a, a nice flat bottom for my maggots. So what this rig incorporates is a really light 4x12s float. If it was a bit shallower, I'd have gone with the 4x10s, but we've got nearly six foot on this line. It's really deep short here. So I've gone with a 4x12s float, a carbon stem float, which is very, very important. With two of the rigs, we're going to be following the bait all the way through the water, watching for an indication. So a carbon stem follows your bait all the way through and hopefully you see an indication at some point as it's going down. So let's say a 4x12s carbon stem float. This is for me, um, my most negative rig that I use out of all of them. So what I have, I have a few fine tuning shots under my float, same as I do with all my rigs. That's just to mark my depth and to get my, um, to get my bristle how I want it. But then the shot in for this rig, all I have is in the bottom, probably the bottom half of the rig, so the bottom three, three, three and a half foot, I've spread out number 11 shot all the way down to just above my hook length and then I have two number 12s, one just on my hook length and one about four inches above my hook length. So what, what that's going to maintain is a really slow fall of the hole on my, my rig through the water. The fish are going to be able to see my maggot falling and I'm going to catch anything that's in my peg. They're always going to have plenty of time to see it and they're going to be feeding visually rather than getting in among all the maggots that are on the bottom. So this is my really delicate rig when I'm feeding minimal bait and I want to make the most of the fish that are feeding at all uh, layers in my swim. So that's the rig we're going to start on when we start fishing. What I tend to like to do, I start on my negative rig and see what's happening. There's no use going in there with a great big heavy rig and just catching fish that are feeding on the bottom. So I want to go in there and just see what's happening to begin with and then I can make my decision what rig to move to after that. So my second rig, as I say, that's me, what I'll begin on just to get the fish feeding in my peg to see what's available for me to be caught. If there's plenty of fish, then I swap to a slightly heavier style of float. I've gone to a 4B14s of the same type of float. And the shot in at this one, it's a solid bulk and two number 11 droppers. The bulk's probably probably a foot and a half away from my, away from my hook. And then I've got two droppers at five inch intervals after that. So they're gonna get my rig down. This one's gonna get my rig down nice and quick with the bulk, but I'm still gonna have that nice little slow fall just in the last couple of foot. That the fish are going to be, it's going to get it down to the bottom. It'll get me fish a little bit quicker when they're feeding on the bottom. What tends to happen is the more competition you get in your peg during the winter, the more the fish actually go down for your bait and they'll proper start feeding for all the loose feed that's on the deck. Whereas when there's a couple there, they're much more inclined to come up and pick off free offerings as they're falling through the water. So, so that's the rig I'm going to move to um, once I've started catching a few fish. So the lines um, and hooks on both of these rigs, both the same. Same again, 015 main line, that does for all my fishing. Yeah, and I've got an 010 hook length on both of these. Just with the fish are pulling a little bit harder now, so I've moved up. I've moved up from the 08 of the winter, and the 010 seems to be a little bit better for getting them out a bit quicker now. Again, the hooks on, um, sorry, but I have to go back to that one with the hooks. The hook on this one's a wide gig maggot size 18. The hook on my lighter rig, I actually use a size 16 gamma black, which is a very, very light gauge hook, which again, similar to what I was doing with my bread, my hook's not going to hinder the weight of my uh, bait in any way. My maggot's going to sink lovely and naturally because my hook's not going to interfere with it. This hook's a little bit heavier and I'm going to fish double maggots on this when the fish are really on the bottom. The last rig that I might switch to, which in all honesty, this is something I'd switch to in much better weather when it's really warm and you're catching a shed full to be honest. And this is simply uh, a 4B14's float. I've come with a wire version on this because I'm not worried about uh, following my bait through the water because of my shot in. So still a 4B14s float, so I've got plenty of weight. And then I've just got a solid bulk there of a load of number 10s. They're literally right on top of a five inch hook length. 
and that'll just get it straight down there and I'll get a bite. I'm not going to catch any fish through the water with this rig, but I'm going to catch a lot of fish feeding uh, that are feeding on the bottom. Generally, I'll fish this, this rig in conjunction with a shallow line. We'll say we're not quite there yet. It's still only March, not quite warm enough, but this is the rig that I'd use for maggots on the bottom during the summer when they're really feeding well. We'll say we're not going to need that one today. We're going to use the other two. What I'm going to start with, so we've got my nice negative rig, which is what be always the rig that I begin my match with, or I begin fishing that line with. This isn't a line that I'd ever feed at the beginning of a match. I'll always fish elsewhere, do what I've got to do, catch them on the far bank, dob a few, whatever. What I tend to do with my uh, middle line, instead of being like everyone else and feeding it from the off, I tend to wait till probably two hours of the match remaining, and then I'll start introducing some bait on there. If I think it's really hard, I may even leave it till the last hour and then introduce a bit of bait once other people start catching fish. My thinking behind that is that I've not created a big area of bait that the fish have got lots of options. Instead, I feed a minimal amount of bait, hopefully at the right time when the fish are thinking of coming into that line to feed, and that way it increases the competition for the bait that I've fed in that area. So if I've only got 10 maggots and I've got 10 fish, they're going to have everything. They haven't got anything to pick and choose. They've got to eat that bait or they don't get any. So hopefully that'll resort to me getting a lot more bites as well. So what I am going to do, I'm just going to kill myself a maggot. Again, this is my negative rig. What I found this year by hooking a maggot right through the middle. You know, I'm hooking a maggot like this instead, right through the middle of the maggot. It creates like a little parachute. I've talked about this in a few features before. In that I believe it creates a parachute and it sinks the same as all the other maggots are sinking. They sink horizontally in the water instead of hooking the bottom of the maggot and the hook bait pulling it through vertically and looking really unnatural. Hopefully that way it looks the same as my feed. So what I'm going to do, I've hooked my maggot and I'm literally, I'm just going to feed half a dozen maggots on that short line. So I fed it probably about 15 minutes ago with 10 maggots. That's all I fed on that line. Just to try and get a few fish in there because the last thing I want to do is create a big area of bait where the fish don't know what to eat. So I've laid that in a great big long line and I'm going to watch it go all the way through the water just to see if anything's feeding. And so what this rig will tell me is if, if there is anything in my peg and what, what there is to catch. So it takes a long time to settle, but at least that way I know. So we had a little tiny indication on the way down then. There's definitely a few fish there already. Whether they're silvers or F1s or who knows, but so by having that lovely slow falling rig, then it actually showed me that there were some fish in the area. Relay that in again. So by seeing there's some fish there now, I know to spend time. I can spend time on this rig, and hopefully I'll be able to catch a few fish. Whereas if I'd have gone straight in with a bulk rig, I'd never see those small indications, and I'd possibly think there were no fish in me swim. Quite sure what's going on there. There's a bit of an indication then. Whether it's some tiny little roach there. So we've not fed anywhere near enough bait to bring the fish up off the bottom. I fed 16 maggots. So hopefully whatever's there has only got a tiny bit of bait to compete for, which will increase the odds of my bait getting eaten. Oh dear, not what we wanted, but like I say it's often the case that you do get a few, a few small fish moving in, a little tiny perch before the F1s arrive. Another point that I will have to make is that what I've definitely found the last few months is, again, I've spoke before about, I don't really believe that flavors and things like that get me bites, but I do like using baits to make my bait, behave, using additives to make my bait behave differently. And what I do in this case when I'm fishing maggots is I just do a few, a little handful that I use a little bit of, of bait dye and use a little bit of powdered bait dye as well just to give them a really vivid red colour. And that way I, I've just used these from my hook. 
So if I'm feeding a nice pile of maggots and they're on the bottom, at least my bait's gonna stand out really nice and clearly on top of them. So it's dying a red maggot red is a little bit strange, but all I'm after is a standout bait. I don't want anything that's really obvious that's purple or whatever, it's something completely different. I just want something that'll subtly stand out, but still be exactly the same as what I'm feeding. One. It took a little while, like it took probably three or four casts and a couple of feeds of six maggots. Whoa! We finally hooked a proper one, but I was useless and lost it. But it's a good sign that it took a little bit of a little bit of bait going in and creating a bit more competition between the fish, and finally we get a get a bite off a off an F1. So what I'm going to do? I'm going to stick with this rig for a few more casts. Hopefully I want to catch two or three F1s before I swap to the other rig and I get them actually feeding on the bottom. What I do want to talk about is how I feed and how much bait I feed. So at the moment with this rig, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to attract, ugh, attract fish into my peg. So by feeding, by feeding six or seven very regularly, like I'm coming in and out probably every minute and, and recupping them back in, I've got a constant amount of bait going through my peg to bring some fish in. Once I get a volume of fish there, then I'm going to change it completely and I'm just going to cup in 10 every fish. So I've, I've got too much, too much bait going through the water. Because the more bait I have going through the water, the more fish I'll attract into my peg. Which may sound like a good thing, but I don't actually want too many fish into my peg. I want to get nice clean bites and I don't want to suffer foul hooking any. So if I stop in that column of bait falling through, I'll be able to catch the fish that are there and then when I need to, I can swap back to feeding in that way and I can attract some more fish into my peg. So the third option that I have is I could also start loose feeding some maggots by hand. But at the moment, I don't quite like doing that. I don't feel it's quite as accurate or as regular as it needs to be. I'd much rather be in and out as regular as I can, cupping them really, really accurately so then creating a much smaller area for the fish to feed. Like once it gets warmer, I definitely agree with cupping a load of bait in. Yeah, throwing a load of bait, sorry. So you are definitely starting to get a few bites now. That's I've literally just lost that one, gone straight in, and the next one's an F1. A little F1, but an F1. Again. So I'll maintain this same routine of feeding, if you like, of just half a dozen maggots until I get problems being caused. So if I start foul locking a few or missing too many bites, or um, it can have an effect of pulling a few too many silvers into my peg. So I'll stay like this until I need to change something. Same again, I'll try and feed my bait, hold my float just to the to the right hand side of that by keeping everything tight and then when I think it's nearly close to being vertical I'll let my float go and I'll let it move right over the top of where those maggots went in. That normally coincides with just as your rig straightens up that's when you're more likely to get your nice little positive bite as the fish has followed your bait to the bottom. Right, well this has gone really, really good now. We're getting plenty of bites. But what's noticeable is I'm wasting quite a bit of time putting my rig in through the water. I'm not getting, oh, I'm getting very, very few bites right as the bait settled. So I'm actually probably wasting a good 10 seconds every single cast with waiting for that rig to settle on the bottom because all my bites are coming when it's on the bottom and it's been there for 10, 20 seconds maybe. So what's that? That's the sign for is to swap to me, me bulk rig. So 
So it's going to get it down really, really quickly. And hopefully that should speed up my, my catch rate slightly. I'm going to start off just on single maggot again. So I'm also going to change my feeding. I'm going to cup in probably about 15 to 20 maggots this time. But I'm only going to feed that once every fish. I'm not going to come in until I've caught a fish off that. What I'm going to do, I'm going to get my bait straight in. Lift my bulk up. Plonk it almost directly over the top of me. Their maggots that I've just put in, and then just follow it down with me float. It's lovely. Now, now my bulk settled, you should slowly be able to see them droppers catching off. They do it quite quick. I'd say that that rig's down in a third of the time that my other rig's taking to settle. Hopefully, there's a big F1 down there waiting for it. What was quite noticeable that seems to happen a lot of the time with you your maggot fishing is that you do always tend to catch a few silvers to begin with. I'd say I, I wouldn't make big decisions just because of that straight away. Don't move off your line because you've caught two or three perch. They always seem to be there and they're always quick on your bait. But what's noticeable now is I'm not getting any bites from any smaller fish. If it goes under, it's a big F1, which is great. That's exactly how the pe I want the peg to develop. That's lovely, see? I'm probably coming back with a fish at least, at least a minute sooner than I was with my other rig. He's done himself, I like it when you do that. Same again, 20 maggots. I'll leave that. So it, it definitely does show just how quick you do actually get a response from pellets. I find it hard to understand why people think that you have to feed that line for so long in advance just to catch on it, when you can move across to the far side of the canal, tap in a half a dozen maggots, pellets, whatever, and get a bite instantly. There's no reason at these well-stocked commercials that you can't do that on your short line as well. But it's all about picking the right time to do it. Don't get me wrong, of course, there's occasions you have to put a bit of bait in, attract some fish into your peg and hold them there to stop other people having them. But you have to be, by playing a much more cautious approach and feeding at the right time when they want to feed, there's much less chance of you messing your peg up by introducing too much bait than there is by doing it this way. So here I can see really clearly how they're feeding, how they want to feed, because I've not got that volume of bait in my peg. I say every single bite that I'm getting now is a lovely positive indication because they're eating my bait and they're not racing around the peg looking for thousands of other maggots. Right, well that, that rig's definitely made a lovely difference for me. It's although I'm not definitely not bagging, but whenever I'm catching a fish, it's a little bit bigger. I say I'm catching fish a bit quicker than I was with that other rig. Which that's what it's all about, making the most of every single fish you walk. If you can get it a little bit quicker than, than the bloke next to you, then hopefully it leads to a couple more fish at the end of the day. Now hopefully what I've shown you is that just by the different ways of feeding and hopefully by, by thinking about the rig that you're using rather than just settling for what you're catching on, and thinking at how you could slightly improve that to catch bigger fish or fish a little bit quicker, that'll put a few more fish in your net next time. Well, thanks very much.